far as having the sex talk with your your kids are concerned, particularly your son, the most important thing to remember is it's not one conversation about physiology. Uh, and that's not as awkward as you think it's going to be. It is totally awkward for your son, but for you, you know, who cares? You changed his diapers and you saw him when he was born, you know, so. But it's not one conversation. It's not because if that's all it is, then, then they can get that at school or for their, from their friends, you know. Physiology and anatomy is the is the smallest part of that conversation, and eventually one that they'll figure out if you don't talk to them about it. But the the conversation is even larger than sex. The conversation is about the things that make sex make sense, that liberate them from the trap of the world and the culture of lust, like. There's a needle of truth in the haystack of the world's error when it comes to pornography and lust, and that is that sex is awesome. It's fun. It's it's a joy, and it's worship. It's how God created it. It's, it's pleasurable, and it is to be desired. And your son should be beginning to notice females when they're thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years old. That that's a natural thing. So you you can't be telling them that that's wrong. Because when you tell them that's wrong, you're competing against God's design. Well, most people are afraid. Like my wife from time to time, when I'm having conversations about sex with the kids, are like, you, you, might, you know, our 10-year-olds that's in the room, you, you can't corrupt them that way. And I said, you know, dear, if God created it and it's good and pure, how am I corrupting it? You know, I understand what she's saying. There's a time and a sequence to it all. But... I want my son to look forward to marriage and to his bride and to the sexual relationship that he has. I don't want him to be inhibited by the message that the church has been delivering, which is primarily that sex is bad and moral people don't have it. Uh, but I, I want him to celebrate it because kind of what we kind of go around telling our kids is, uh, you know, we don't want to talk about sex. We don't want to mention it because if it happens, if you talk, start talking about it, it's all you're going to think about. Look, bro, when they're 14 and 15, that's kind of pretty much what they're thinking about anyway. So the question is, do you want to guide that or do you want to prohibit that? Do you want to have an open conversation with your son that has spanned over 15 years and prepares them and protects them? Or do you just want to add a PA conversation, shut it down, don't ever talk to me about this? But if you don't begin the conversation, then they're going to get that information from somewhere. I want to create in my son a perspective where he sees a billboard somewhere that has a scantily clad woman selling, I don't know, pipe cleaners or toilet brushes or whatever they sell sex with these days. And to look at that ad and go, that's ridiculous. And as the title of the, the, of the book says, when it comes to pornography, Hugh Hefner will die alone. He's not going to take any of this pleasure that he's had all these years with him. And I don't want my son to condemn Hugh Hefner, Hugh Hefner or to view himself as any more worthy than Hugh Hefner, but I want him to pity the life that he's had because it's a lie. And so I want my son not only to celebrate the real thing, but to disdain the opposite. And I want to do this not only for my son, but for my future daughter-in-law, because I don't, I don't want to hand over some, you know, her to some Neanderthal, or as we call it around here, Sasquatch. I want to be broken by the gospel and, and to add the gospel and sex and worship and sex and put them in the same sentence and be comfortable with those things.